Motor broke. Motor, well. Transmission broke. Motor. We broke. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's broke. And uh, good news is, for the people that want to watch, we got plenty of stuff to fix. Yeah, we do. So, so. hang around. The old Chevette. <laughs> What are you looking at there? The motor that came out of the car. You think about taking that intake with the fogger off of it? Well, no, because it doesn't look as good as what we're talking about doing. But You got to keep the purple intake? I would like to, because it looks good. Just put a nitrous plate on it? Yeah, that's the plan. What you got sitting right next to you there? Pontiac cylinder head. For a 4.3, huh? Yeah. Looks like it's missing some components. But it is aluminum and it is a cylinder head. It is aluminum and it is, yeah, it is missing some, you know, crucial pieces, but. Okay, so you mentioned um, <clears throat> nitrous plate and you're leaning on an aluminum cylinder head. <laughs> Does that mean we're going faster? Yes. 12 O's is boring? It's not boring, but we can go faster. It's not boring, but it's boring. But it's not boring, but we can go faster. And nitrous is cool. Okay, so how fast are we trying to go now? Probably to where we can run like some of the 7 O stuff around here. Okay, so we're shooting for 7 O eighth mile. Yeah. Are you going to try to run quarter mile and spray that fast? That's probably going to put you high 10s, be low 11s. Yeah. 11s. Probably like the 11 no index for a quarter mile stuff. Okay. So that's, uh, that's the next thing on your list is nitrous, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because his GTR guy wouldn't give me his turbo, so. Oh. Dang Trevor. <laughs> All right, so what's the next step? What are we doing now? Uh, <coughs> we are about to um, pull a transmission pan on the Chevette because we may or may not have burned the transmission up in Dallas traffic on race week. I was pretty certain we did burn the transmission up, and then it seemed like it kind of... We've flushed it, and it got better. Yeah. So I don't know if maybe... The fluids melt burnt, but it was still red, and then the transmission started shifting fine, so we're not real sure. Yeah, it didn't look like it had a whole lot of clutch material in the in the fluid when it came out, so. Yeah, so we're gonna pull the pan, check, make sure everything is good. So if there's no clutch material, no metal in the pan. Then we're going to um, put a different valve body in it, and then if we get the pan off and things don't look good then I guess we're pulling the transmission and we may be done for the year we'll have to see we've talked about putting an overdrive transmission in it too so but this transmission has got some pretty good billet stuff in it so I don't really want to just abandon it for yeah a stock-ish overdrive unit and it rolled down the highway at 70 pretty good it was turning 33 3500 rpms yeah so we, we can handle that yeah, I mean, it did fine whenever we were driving that fast. Well, while we could till we got yelled at by your dad that he couldn't go that fast. So. Well, he had rocker arms trying to fly off and <laughs> oil leaks above 3,000 RPMs and <laughs> <laughs> whatever. But. So, but other than that, <laughs> the Chevette, it handled it just fine. So. What's funny is, that cylinder head you're leaning on right there is basically one cylinder less, but it's almost the exact same style head that's on his car. Yeah. It's got an offset um, lifter rocker situation for the intake side. His is the same way? Yep. It's a Pontiac. That's basically the six cylinder version of the heads that are on his car. But that's got an intake, uh, a raised intake runner situation. So these Edelbrock 
intakes that we have, like this one, will not fit without an extensive amount of welding and porting and grinding and that kind of thing. Which could be an issue for us. And they do make an intake for one of those. I have found one, but I uh, don't believe it's going to clear the hood because it's pretty tall. So, uh, as of right now, we're trying to come up with ideas on how to make this cylinder head work without having to pay somebody like 2500 to 3500 to who knows what to build like a sheet metal intake for it. Yeah, that's not really ideal. I would really like to get aluminum heads on it, but if we can't, we can't. Yeah, so, so we'll have to figure that situation out. So, ultimate end goal at this moment if we pull this pan off and everything looks good in there let's put a valve body in it we're gonna put a valve body in it and we're probably gonna go buy a nitrous kit if everything checks out good okay and we're gonna spray this motor and play with this motor yes until because we think this motor's already got it's got some blow some, by yeah so it needs rings right so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna freshen it for next year december yeah. or so it needs it okay I think car, we wore this motor out. Yeah. We got streetcar takeover in Oklahoma City the 1st of November. That's a possibility. Yep. There's a couple of bracket races you thought about hitting. Yeah. Now that you're a bracket racer. Yeah. So. <laughs> Allegedly. Well, <laughs> I guess the only way to find out get is to get this thing air. up in the air. Yeah. Kind See what's in there. Kind of scared to pull it out. Well, lucky me. You get to take the header bolts out. Because if you come down here, you know, world's smallest car ever. The old Pro Mod V6 motor. Can't get to the pan bolts over here. Because the exhaust is literally shoved up against the pan on this side. So that's fun. How's your side? Oh, wide open spaces. Uh, yeah, actually, it's, it's not too bad over here. Mm. That's nice. Not too bad. Okay, well, I guess we're going to drain this dip. See what comes out of here. So I'll be honest with you. Here's my professional opinion before we get this thing out. Oops, sorry. I'm on tilt the world over here. Oh. Hold on, people. So I don't think this thing's hurt. Because the fluid was it smelled bad. It still smells bad. You can pull the dipstick and it smells bad. But <laughs> There's not like a bunch of clutch material in the like mixed in with the fluid. It wasn't dark. It wasn't burnt. It just it just smelled bad. It smelled freaking terrible. I'm not terrible. a chemist, so I don't know <laughs> what like the physical properties are of the transmission fluid we we're using. If maybe it just got too hot and it was causing a pressure issue. I don't know. There's a little bit of crap on the magnet whenever we pulled it the first time, but the last time I put fluid in this thing, the converter was brand new. The transmission had just been freshened, so I mean you're gonna have you have a little bit of trash from that. So if I were to be betting right now, I'd be willing to bet we pull this. It may have a little bit on the mag the magnet like last time. I don't think the fluid's gonna be bad, and honestly, if we pull the pan off, I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot in the pan. So I really <laughs> feel like that we can put a valve body in this thing and get by for a little while. Now that's not saying that there's anything actually wrong with this valve body. A few people kind of wondered when we're putting a valve body in if it's still shifting. This is a um, this is like a street <laughs> style valve body. It's not necessarily like a manual shift it yourself valve body. However, 
we put it in the car, it had about a 500 RPM rise before it actually shifted. It's just continuously got worse. But the transmission is not slipping, yeah. I don't feel like. So I figure if I put a good valve body in it, we can get by until we get it freshened up. So there's a little bit on that magnet, but it's not that bad. Better than it was the other day. Yeah. There's still some stuff on it, but on a factory pan, usually they got a magnet that's about that big around, and usually that thing's covered and stuff. Even on a good transmission, it's covered and stuff, so I figure that little bitty bit's probably not bad. I don't know if you can see in the video or not, but that fluid is bright red. It's not burnt. Like black burnt up transmission burnt, so. It doesn't smell as bad as it did at the track. When we burnt, when we um, drained it at the track, I mean, you could smell it. Smell it. Still it. smell good, but yeah, it doesn't smell as bad as it was. So, I'll wipe that stuff off there and we'll get this deal drained. And get the fan off of it. Get to go pull the header off. I'll switch sides. You probably just take the header bolts loose and we'll probably take those exhaust bolts out. Those are always fun. Those aren't that bad. Do that and then you probably get a pry bar and just pry it over and one of us can hold the pry bar and the other one can go after the bolts. Okay. We'll get those loose and then we'll move on. So. I guess we're going to go do that. We just pull the pan on this deal. Stick around. Well, we got the pan off. What do you think? Well, there's, there's metal in it. Yeah, there is. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's just glittery. Yeah, we got some metalage. That glue looks real dark in here. No, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I mean, it's not eat smooth up situation, but there's there's definitely some crap in there. Yeah, and it smells nasty, it's but already, then again, that's just... It's already filled up around that magnet back up. Yeah. Transmission fluid's so gross. I think she might have some problems. I think so. Yeah, you can see it. Well, that's, uh... Well, I think it's time to consult with a transmission specialist. <laughs> Dang it. Poor little Chevette. Looks like you may be, uh... You may be spending your Wicked Chick money on a transmission rather than... fun stuff. Why are you trying to bust my bubble? That's why. I'm not a transmission guy, so I don't... <laughs> I know a certain amount of that's going to be normal, but I feel like that's excessive. Yeah, it looks like quite a bit. Well... We'll control it with a, consult with a transmission specialist. Yep. And figure out what we're going to do, because... Um, it does look like there's quite a bit of metal in there. Man, that's going to kind of suck, because I really wanted you to be able to hit a couple more races this year. Well... And if that thing's... So things eat up. I don't really want to take the transmission out, rebuild it, put it right back in to hit one or two races. I know. And then turn around, pull the motor back out. Right. Plus, what did we find? Front seal leaking. Uh, crank seal's leaking, but it's a race motor. <laughs> they all leak. It's sweat and horsepower. Oh my gosh. I guess worst case, if you want to go run streetcar takeover and stuff like that, you can run my Camaro. 
Yeah, we always got. I don't. The problem with it is I don't think it's going to be fast enough for 11 o, and I don't think it's it's not it's going to be faster than 12 o. So we'll see. We'll figure it out. <sighs> Dang it! This car just now. If anything, fights us. I, I'm happy that we made it. Yeah, that for we did sure. Everything that we did and didn't have more of an issue than we did, but I would be willing to bet that that that's probably what happened. I bet something. I bet it sucked a piece of that crap up in the valve body. Yeah. I didn't pull the filter off of it because it's bolted on, but I'd be willing to bet it sucked something in the valve body and it just hung up and that's why it wasn't shifting. And then we flushed out what we could. Yeah, probably. And, but, you know, and you can kind of see in this fluid over here, it's pretty dark. I mean, it's in a black pan, it's in the shade. And the more you get, you know, the more, the darker it gets, but it, it's, it's pretty dark. So. I don't know. Maybe it's hurt worse than I think it is. I don't know. Poor little car. So, the situation that we're going to be faced with at this point. We talked about putting an overdrive in it. If we do that, everybody's fixing to get mad. I think a stock 700R4 is probably what's <laughs> going to go in it. And I don't think it's going to hurt it because the car doesn't make any torque. And the car doesn't weigh anything. So... <sighs> Everybody yells 700R4, 4L60 suck. I'm not saying I disagree, but there's a 3,600 pound car and driver over there that's got several 11 second passes on it. Hmm. Like several, like 2015, I think is when I had the transmission built. Don't say it. What? You're gonna jinx yourself. No, I'm not. That thing went to the mountains with that trailer on it on race week on 1.0. I got all the faith in the world in that transmission. So, back to my point. I feel like that would probably be the best move to put an overdrive in it is just put a 700 in it and be done with it. And then you got the big first gear, you got an overdrive. We can take the 373s out, probably put like a 430 in it. You got more low gear, you got still got overdrive. I think it'd pick the car up a whole lot, all of that. However, to do that, we're gonna have to buy a converter. We're gonna have to buy a shifter. Get a different drive shaft. Yep, gonna have to get a different drive shaft or have that one shortened. And then we're gonna have to build another transmission cross member. And I feel like that's kind of a whole lot of work considering we're fixing to put nitrous on it. So that'll pick it up, whatever I'm trying to pick it up with the turbo or with the 700. And the transmission we have right now has good stuff in it. Yeah, it's got some billet stuff in it. So it's yeah. pretty good. And then, you know, the whole cruising down the highway at 70 thing right now is fine. I mean, we cruise 65 really fine. So I mean, an overdrive would definitely be nice, but I don't. I don't know that it's worth the hassle and the money and the work that it's fixing to cost. Whenever we have got a transmission that's really good that we've kind of put through hell, honestly, the last two years because we really have. That thing's got two race weeks on it. We went and did that 12 deal where they hot lapped us, where I think I put like seven passes on that thing in two hours or whatever it was. Yeah. Plus, you know, the street driving with the trailer and driving it wherever. 50 million burnout there's a lot of different color shinies in that deal which has got me kind of worried so lots of sparklies in there and i guess i'm fixing to start making phone calls on getting a transmission built and if we're doing that then i guess we're gonna have to start figuring out if we're gonna do what we're gonna do with the motor yeah where hmm dang it so we're taking this car on 2.0 next year which is is more than likely going to be September October area, which is what it's been the last three years. Yeah. Um, it's usually close to Labor Day. And we're already starting on this situation. I mean, pretty much have to to be prepared. Yeah, but have we started on our 1.0 project? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even. Well. No, no, we haven't. No. We have ideas, but no, we haven't started. Yeah. All right. This is what it is. So, we are going to, uh, yeah, figure this situation out. Dang it. Well. I Phone a friend. I absolutely hate the smell of transmission fluid. <laughs> and everybody and their mom can make fun of me for wearing these. Hold on. Guess what? I don't care. 
we're gonna put these on. We're gonna get a little bit of video. I'll consult with transmission guys. And then, um, I guess we'll go from there. If we get a consensus on that deal, we'll be sure and let you know. But then my next call is gonna be the engine guy. So Wayne, get your phone handy. <laughs> we'll keep you updated. Well, it's not good news. Yeah. I walked the pan outside and started digging around in there and we found some chunks. There's some pretty good sized chunks in there. Pretty good sized chunks. And the fluid in the sunlight looked like it had glitter in it. I'll bet we've got it. Is it the other way? Let's see if you can kind of see it. There's a big chunk up there. Yeah, there's probably six or seven big chunks in there. And then, you see all that stuff. I think some of that is just clutch and steel materials, but the chunks are not. So that's what worries me. So, um, if it was just some clutch material and a little bit of shiny, I wouldn't be as worried about it. But listen, after we got, I put my glove on and dug around it a little bit more after I got it over on the bench and I found all of those chunks. I'm not worried about that. So, what's the plan now, Stan? Uh, we're going to pull the transmission out. Since um, we're pulling the transmission, we're going to go ahead and pull the motor. Um, so, everything we just did two weeks ago, we're fixing to do again, plus the transmission. Yeah. So, so. we're going to be pros at pulling this thing out. So we uh, we talked to our engine guy Wayne, Pratt Racing Engines. Poor Wayne. Yeah, he <laughs> um, he's actually got a spot open to look at one. Um, he's got somebody coming in a couple weeks, but he said he's got a, an empty spot right now. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing out, get it to him this weekend, yep. and we're gonna pull it apart and see if. We just got some worn rings, see what the block looks like. Yeah, so we're gonna get the, get the motor out, get it to Wayne, and then... Um, With the fact that we've got a transmission that is shelled now, right? we're probably not doing the Pontiac head, aluminum head situation. Probably not. Not right now, but we've got this other motor sitting here. And with it being a 4.3, Everybody says that if you go 60 over, you have heating issues and the block is thinner on this versus like a standard 350. So we're a little bit worried to go 60 over. The motor in the car is 40 over already. Yep. So I don't, I don't know what we're going to do if it needs to be bored or if it needs a block. I don't know what bore this block is. So we'll probably rip a head off of that one. Scratch that. Wayne will probably whip it, rip the head off of that one. <laughs> Sorry, Wayne. We're probably going to just take that <laughs> motor to him as well. And I don't have the stuff to measure the bore other than like a tape measure. Yeah. So we well, don't have machine shop tools. No. So we'll probably take both motors to him actually now that we're sitting here talking about it. We'll check and see if that motor that's in the car needs to be bored. Yep. Um, we obviously have to find another block at that point. Hopefully this one may be usable. If it is, we'll take the rotating assembly out of the motor that's in the car. If not, I guess I'm going to have to find another junkyard and go yeah. drag my dad to to get another yeah, but block. I talked to Wayne. He was pretty much thinking, you know, we'll check check the bearings and it doesn't really have enough runs or, or enough miles on it really to probably need bearings and stuff. But... I kind of talked to him about it. The fact that we've already done two race weeks on it. It's got some street miles. It's got some race miles on it. And I think I'd rather spend an extra couple hundred dollars. And let's go ahead and put a time and chain on it. Let's go ahead and put valve springs on it. Get a valve job done. Let's just freshen this deal up and do it right since we got it out of the car. Right. So depending on what we find from there, it may turn out being a little bit more than just rings and bearings. But it's better to do it now than not do it and then have another... Do it on the side of the road. Right. Yeah, I got my feel of valve train on the side of the road last Cheap week. Insurance on you. Yeah, so we get the transmission out, get it to the transmission shop, 
we will probably try to get a hold of Circle D. Yep. See if they want to mess with the torque converter because it's not. It's weird. It's not really a torque converter they deal with, and they I feel like they kind of did us a, a solid the last time they messed with it. They definitely did. So I'll get a hold of Dan over there and see if he wants to mess with it. If yeah. not, we'll find somebody, an old school them. converter shop, <laughs> FTI or somebody, and see if they want to mess with it. Hopefully somebody will. And uh, get the transmission freshened and fixed, and hopefully it's not eat up too bad. Hopefully not. Um, she's broke. She broke, broke. You broke it. I always break it. A little bit. We're going to try to make this thing a little bit faster. Yeah. We're going to make sure it's more reliable. We're going to build some things a little bit better than we did the first time. Yep. I feel like we've learned quite a bit. We have. Um, it's just kind of hard with this car because everything's so compact. You don't really have any room and there's just not much you can do about dissipating the heat in here. Yeah, there's not really anywhere for heat to go. But we planned on trying to go to streetcar takeover. We planned on trying to hit a couple bracket races. What does that look mean? You taking my car? Maybe. <laughs> so I may have lost my ride. It's been sitting there, you know. You just and it hasn't been moved since we got back from race week 1.0. Yeah. That's fine. Do you want to drive it? We'll go get a muffler put on it since it blew the muffler out <laughs> about halfway through 1.0. <laughs> get a muffler put on it and uh, you can go drive that deal. Go bracket race it, do whatever we want to do. Plus, I won that muscle car race. We got to get that car ready anyway. Cause no, I, you do. You got to go run your big dog race. Well, I'm in the big dog race. Big dog. Big dog. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna get that deal ready to go race anyway you do and um plus we got a minimum of three other projects that this winter that we have to tackle we have so much stuff it's ridiculous so y'all stay tuned because it's about to get hectic yes it is here we are is this thursday yep thursday after race week <clears throat> we figured out monday night transmission broke transmission is broke so we took a couple of days and thought about it. Yeah. And uh, what's our what's our course of action here? We're gonna pull the motor and the transmission. And we're gonna take the transmission and have it looked at. Um, and then we're gonna take the motor to Wayne and have him go through it. <clears throat> um, cause it's it's kind of wore out from everything we've done with it. Yeah, and we are we may try to make a couple of changes to it. We kind of did a rush job on that motor the first time. So now that we have a little bit of time, we're doing a little bit of research, and we may try some things that are a little bit different, may help it. Yeah. And then we're going to take the other motor that came out of the car yeah, and tear it down yeah. and see exactly what's inside of it because I've had the pan off, but we've never actually yeah, we've never gone actually all that far torn. into it torn that down so yeah i don't know what the cam is or anything like that so we're going to tear that motor down we're just going to put together what we've got yeah, and um, basically plan is we're going to freshen that up yep get the motor you know healthy yes. get the transmission good and healthy we talked to dan at circle d yep. he is willing to cut that converter apart try to fix it go through our weird converter yep so they're going to do that and then uh, once we get it back together we are going to put a nitrous plate on it yes and we are going to spray it. Yes. So we're going to make sure the rings are gapped for all that. And then probably call in help from a couple <laughs> expert friends of mine. And We definitely, <laughs> we're definitely going to consult with some friends on the nitrous so we don't burn anything up. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the plan. So we're fixing to rip the motor out. Rip the motor and transmission out of that deal. we got to put the pan back on it so we can get the transmission out. Yeah, on we the deck. Oh, fun fact, guys. Metal's still in there. Dang it. Awesome. Okay. Wow. Ready? Are we ever ready? Let's do it.
All right, we've been at it an hour. Yep. Where are we at? Uh, we got the water drained out, the headers, uh, sorry, harbor. Header bolts are out, water's drained out, um, carburetor steps all, well, got the carburetor off and we got the plate on it to pull the motor out. Distributors off and all the, um, I don't know what just happened. Well, it looked like a truck with a trailer just passed somebody on a one-lane road over here. Anyway, sorry, short attention span. Burn -a -nur -nur -nur. <laughs> Plug wires are off, distributor's out. And the cap is off, distributor's still off. Well, yeah, cap's off. Um, my valve cover's off because I was fighting with a bell housing bolt. We have three of those left in that we got to get out. Um, so two bottom ones and then the one you get from the firewall. Yep. Back there. Um, what have you done underneath? Uh, exhaust is unhooked and it's hanging the drive shafts out of it so uh, we got the transmission cross member mm -hmm. the converter bolts and the couple bell housing bolts that are left and then motor mount bolts and this deal will be out yep and we made pretty good time oh An you hour. got the alternator off yep all the hoses and stuff are undone yeah yeah we did good for an hour oh, we're pros at this now I guess we yeah. just did this a week ago so we did screw up well i guess it was more or less i'm an idiot and well, didn't think about it i but didn't either we left the old uh cardboard underneath there and didn't put a drain pan underneath it after we got the paint off the other day it's nasty that deal soaked That's and then gross. it soaked the floor which i've been uh brake clean and towel and then i've been rolling around in it so i'm sure it's soaking into my shirt but Ew. Yeah, so that's why we've done all the top stuff first. And we're going to wait and do the bottom stuff here in a minute because we're going to have to roll around in the old transmission fluid. Lovely. But now it's break time. Yeah. Food's here. We can grab us some food. Thank God for DoorDash. Yeah, well, we've been gone. And then we were busy, and then we were gone, and then we were busy, and then we were busy, then we were busy, and then we were gone, then we were busy, so... And we're lazy. Oh, uh, well, that's, that's probably... The, the other one, the other excuse sounds better. <laughs> so I don't even know the last time we went to the grocery store, but... It's been a while. Yeah. Well, who wants to cook when we're outside doing this? Yep. Yeah, we got stuff to do. We got, like, how many more weeks? 51 weeks until race week? <laughs> yeah. Times a crunching. Times are really crunching. Yeah, especially since. Well, we won't even talk about that yet. Yeah. All right then, that's where we're at. Got them out. Little custom paint job still hanging on too. Kind of. Not too bad, huh? I think I'm gonna die now. No. Yeah. Transmission was hard, and I think you did all the work. Yeah. Car didn't come factory with a turbo 350, so it was a little bit tight in there a little we got it out yeah i don't even know what time it is do you
752. So we started at like, what do we say, like 445? Yeah. And we had our dinner. <laughs> yeah, had a food break. Our Jimmy John's picnic in the No, top. Jersey Mike's. Oh yeah, Jersey Mike's. So, I don't think we did that bad. So, we got the converter over there draining. So, we can get the, uh, we get that converter shipped off to Circle D tomorrow, I guess, if you want to. Tomorrow's Friday, right? Friday, yeah. yeah. Then we have to leave the house. We do have to leave the house. I guess we could do it Saturday morning when we go to Wayne's. Yeah. I guess it ain't really gonna matter if it gets there Monday or Tuesday. No, because if we ship it tomorrow, it's probably not gonna move till... Yep. Anyway. We'll figure out what we're doing on transmission side of things and get that thing taken care of and I think it's actually harder to get the transmission out of this car than it is the motor out. I agree. hundred percent. And it's not even just the bell housing bolts, like it's the whole thing. Yeah, it's hard to get that transmission out. Like and then like to get it out from underneath the car, like you got it on a jack stands like that. Well, I mean, we, we don't really have anything else we can do right now. Get that to Wayne, get that shipped up to Circle D, and then get that taken over to transmission guy. Look at that paint job, though. I know. It held up. Custom. It still looks good. It don't look terrible. For being in there. And Yep. The beating it went through with us putting it in and whatever else. Well, I guess that's a wrap for our uh, post race week. It's broke video. Yeah, it's it's broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it looks like we're kickstand down on the Chevette for a little bit. Yep, we are down. But you know, playing video. Yeah. All right, so that's a wrap. Motor's out, transmission's out, and uh, Chevette is down for the count, probably for the rest of the year. Sadly. Depending on how fast we get everything back, there's a possibility we may try to hit some stuff in November, but I'm, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, because there's streetcar takeover. They just announced, I think, there's one in Dallas, too. Oh. There was a streetcar takeover in Oklahoma City we were talking about, and now I'm pretty sure there's one in Dallas. And then there's the King of the Open Road. That's in November, right? Yes, King of the Open Road, Oklahoma City. So even if we don't have the Chevette done for that, I would like to take the Camaro for that. Yeah. So we're going to get this thing back together. Um, I'm going to say as quick as possible, but it kind of depends on what's all broke too. Because right. if it's going to cost more than what and your traditional freshen up would be, then we're probably going to be down for a little bit. But. And parts availability. Parts availability is an issue. Yeah. For sure. So we'll see. May be back out this year, may not, but we've got a bunch of good stuff going on. We're going to pick something up next week. Yeah. So stick around for that. We may have sold something that may be leaving in the next few weeks. Maybe. Maybe. Which is kind of sad because we have had fun with it. And then, uh, yeah, on the NHRA side of things, we got the National coming up. Yeah, we need to with get, the dragster. get that thing ready. And then uh, it may be disappearing soon after that, too. Yeah. We got a lot coming up pretty quick. So, so we're going to try to video the best we can and kind of go from there. Yep. It's like whenever things happen around here, things happen around here. Yeah. We've done really good with actually videoing this time, though. So, Sorry we failed at videoing on race week, but, you know. All right. That's a wrap. Yeah. We broke a lot of stuff. Well, kind of. We wore a lot of stuff out. Technically, we'll I didn't break nothing. Okay. I was a co-pilot. I broke <laughs> a lot of stuff. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. I'm out. Um... So, just want to say a quick thanks to everybody for all of the, uh, you know, well, new subscribers on our YouTube. Um, and then 
all of the support on Facebook and Instagram. Um, we're trying to put out, you know, content. Um, but thanks for all the support, following me, following the car, following John. Um, just everything's following along with us. We'll just do like everybody else. Hit that like and subscribe button, like and share. <laughs> Hit yeah. the bell button so you know Hit. you know when notifications are coming. Yeah. When we that. get new stuff. Hit the bell. What? Like and share. Like yeah. and share. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah. But. but seriously, thank you. It means a lot. Um, we work hard at this stuff and we have fun doing it. So it's cool to be able to share it with people. And If there's stuff y'all want to know, stuff y'all want to see, you know, we had some people ask about uh, wanting kind of an overview of the car and things like that, let us yeah. know in the comments. Yeah. You know, we don't mind sharing. Yeah, or if you have questions, suggestions, whatever, let us know. Hit us up. Yep. We'll be around. All right, then. We out. <laughs>